Let's do some easy glitter ombre nails and a fun decal. What's up, nail crew? It's Nicole, your fellow nail obsessed DIYer, and I am finally back doing my nails. I haven't really done them much in the past, like two and a half weeks. Actually, the past month and a half, um, my kids have been sick. Everybody's basically been taking turns. So I just kept my builder gel on, and I think I've done like maybe two or three manis in the past month and a half, which for me is basically like nothing. So I'm so excited to be doing my nail skin since everybody is slowly starting to get healthier. I want to jump back in with a subscriber request. I've been asked a bunch of times to do glitter ombre nails and show some of my tips and tricks and how I have a real easy way to do it that does not require a lot of skill. So I always try to do stuff the easiest possible way. Um, I'm doing my nails at night, I'm tired, and I'm a home DIYer. I'm not a nail tech, I'm not a professional. I just do this for fun in my house because I because I love having my nails done. So if I can figure out any ways that make it easier, I'm definitely going to pass them on to all of you. I decided to do this light color called <laughs> Because You Have the Credit Score of a Homeless Ghost. Uh, if you watch The New Girl on Fox, if you've ever watched it, I think, well, now it's on Netflix. Or no, it was on Netflix, but I think it's going on Hulu now. Anyways, it is a hilarious show. That's what these dips are inspired by. And that's the first dip. And then the other one that I'm going to be doing, the glitter, is called I Need You Long and Loose Like Seagrass. Uh, if you watch the movie or if you watch the show, you'll definitely understand the references. That's pretty hilarious. I I did decide to do two dips of the white color, the because you have the credit score of a homeless ghost. It's like an off-white with a pink tint. And you'll notice that it's going on kind of uneven. This is because I did not put my peel base on correctly. I kind of slopped it on and kept going over my nails like a million times. I don't know why. I think it's just because I'm so rusty and forgetful. Like I hadn't done my nails in so long and I definitely was feeling rusty for, do <laughs> for not doing it for so long. So I also don't think I let it dry enough. So the layers kind of looked funny and that's why my first layer of this went on because I noticed it did the same thing when I did my other man or when I did my other hand. I must have just not been paying attention like I mean that's not a shock if you know me that I often do things a little bit sloppy but doing the second layer luckily that dip was really opaque so the second layer made it look really nice and then once I did the layer of clear over top and did the ombre it ended up being okay that I didn't put my peel base on very nicely so once I finished two dips of the homeless go ho homeless ghost one then I went in with the glitter and did two dips on my thumb and my pinky when you're using glitters you always want to make sure that you lay your nail flat into them whether they're chunky glitters mini glitters mini chunk glitters fine glitters foils flakes these are flakes flakes and some i think it's flakes and fine glitter but anything that you're using that's not a solid or a shimmer the the dip powder goes onto your nail so much nicer when you can lay your nail flat onto it i'm using these little dip cups from sj3 designs which i'm absolutely obsessed with i'm gonna be ordering more of them because i have six of them and now that I'm going to start doing my nails more, like sometimes I forget to wash my stuff. And even though it literally this stuff, like it takes like two seconds to wash. Sometimes I just don't want to be bothered. Let's jump into how we're going to do the ombre. I wanted to do an ombre at the tip of my nail because all the rest of my videos I've shown, I've just done ombres at the bottom of my nail for the most part. Make sure you grab an ombre brush. That is going to be key to getting your nice ombre look. I like the fluffy ones for an ombre like the one that I'm going to be doing. You want to start by putting your dip base most of the way down your nail, but not all the way because you don't want any of your glitters to get like way down at the bottom. That'll kind of like take away from some of the ombre effect that you're going to get. So I try to go a good amount of the way down, but not all the way to back to my cuticle. You saw me just barely stick the tip of my nail into the dip powder. That is how I get a concentration of the dip of the glitter right at the tip of my nail so that it, I don't have to do so much tapping. So I'm doing it again with my middle finger. I slide my nail into the glitter very gently, just laying it flat on top of it at an angle so that it doesn't go really far down my nail. It's like literally just the tip of my nail going in. And then I take my ombre brush and just start tapping with my nail faced a little bit upward so that 
that when I do the tapping, the glitters kind of fall down the rest of my nail towards my cuticle. And it works really, really well, especially if you are not that great at ombre and you're not that great at tapping. You get like, you struggle with getting as even of coverage. Then this way, you know you have the coverage at the edge of your nail and you don't have to worry that your tapping's not gonna be perfect. You basically are just tapping in the general area of where you did the ombre and then going like tapping it downwards that is my trick to doing the glitter ombres at the tip of my nail and making them look nice and not too bulky you definitely want to make sure that you top all of your glitters or any colors really that i top everything with clear dip powder i know some people don't like top solids but i really do it seems to protect them really well and sometimes i end up being like a little bit more aggressive with my filing and buffing so i make sure that i put clear dip powder over all of my nails since some of my nails have a solid color i want them to stay nice and solid so i go through and i activate those before i even do the clear dip powder for my glitter nails which to me like using clear over glitters solid or glitters flakes foils anything like that like that's a non-negotiable unless you're using gels and you top top them with gel base anyways then I activated the two glitter nails and I'm going through and I like to tap my nails before I go and I do try my filing because if you try to file your nails before they're ready, you can end up accidentally filing off chunks of your nails, which like after you work that hard, you definitely don't want that. And I want to leave in a little bit showing you how even though my nails did not go that great this time, like I feel like I was just really off on my application. I just use an e-file, the Panna Extra Fine Barrel Bit, and I go around my cuticles and crisp them up or, you know, Know, make my cuticle lines look nice that's my secret that i don't keep secret to how i get nice looking cuticle lines especially if i had a really rough application night the night that i did this mani i was definitely struggling hard there was a couple times where i straight up forgot what i was doing at one point i sat there and stared at my nails and literally could not remember what i was gonna do next that is how rusty i was plus i was really tired and forgetful in an, on like on a normal basis let's get into the fun decal i am so excited this decal as soon as i saw it i knew exactly which one i was looking for it i i knew i had some kind of floral decal that was going to match with these these colors so first i like to cut out the decal just the basic shape of it and then i place it on my nail just to, to see how it's going to look and i'll cut off a little bit more of the sides up towards the top of my nail since i have almond nails that just means that i have less decal to pull off the sides of my nails or to to get off the sides of my nails not pull you should never pull decal off your nails you want to soak your decal for at least 15 seconds in a little bowl of water I like these little mini bowls that I get from JN designs off Etsy they're really really handy so that I don't have to like be wasting big bowls every time that would just be crazy so these little bowls are my go-to I also like to apply my decals with stampers. For me, it just allows me to squish it on really hard there right in the beginning and get it exactly where I want it to be placed without having to touch it with my hands. I was using gels to do this. Before I even applied the decal, I did a layer of gel base and cured it for 30 seconds. Then I wanted to leave more of the decal application in than I normally have in past manis because I, or in past videos because I want you guys to see it doesn't have to be perfect right away for the decal decal to end up looking nice like you have to do some work okay this decal is from decals by melissa i really like using her decals because they're a little bit stronger so for somebody like me who's really rough on pretty much everything i touch uh that includes all of my nail stuff the, the her decals allow me to be a bit rougher with them i'm always using acetone to get off the sides of the decal and first i go around with my angled cleanup tool and get like get some acetone on the sides and the back around the cuticle of my nail just to get that initial loosening up of the decal back there. Then I take an orange wood stick and really go in with more detail to make sure everything is laying nicely. And I dip the orange wood stick in acetone. That little pump bottle I have there, the white pump bottle, that's filled with 100% acetone. I love keeping that. This way I can always have it for whatever I'm going to be doing for my nails. Typically, I just use the acetone with decals. I don't really use it for anything else anymore. I try not to use much acetone. I just use isopropyl alcohol. 
When I was doing the decal application, I totally forgot to put some kind of little finger cut or a piece of plastic over my pointer finger to make sure that I didn't get any gel in it since I was using gels to apply it. So make sure that even when you're doing a decal, you don't touch anything that has gel on it. And even though the gel was underneath and it was cured, I still should have known better. And next time I'll definitely be using a little finger cut. Then I went in with gel base over all my nails, fully cured that and topped with gel top coat fully curing that. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss any of the huge news I have coming up. And let me know in the comments if you have any decal questions. Thanks so much for joining me today, Nail Girl.